Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ari and hopefully you'll stick around for a quick video. Okay guys, so today I want to talk about another, I guess you could say this is another political video so to speak. Um, I live in Ohio, northwestern part of the state, so closest out towards Indiana. We are Midwest to the core. Um, I was born and raised, as most of you guys know, in the South. I am a Southern girl. And one of the issues I see that kind of come up more recently are things surrounding the Confederate flag. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, I've never seen more Confederate flags than I do here in Ohio. A state that was never ever part of the Confederacy, and yet I hear people talk about it as, quote, our heritage. Okay, first of all, it's not Ohio's heritage. It is Southern, quote, heritage. But we'll talk a little bit about what that heritage really means. So as a Southern person, I am absolutely disgusted every time I see a Confederate flag. It says something to me, and I know it says even worse to people of color, because the Confederate battle flag is a flag that was used you know, partially during the Civil War and directly following it. And we have to ask ourselves, what was the Civil War really about? And there's a lot of reasons people want to give, uh, especially in the South, for why, you know, quote, northern aggression or to preserve our way of life. But you have to ask, what was that way of life that people were fighting to preserve? And when you look at what the early Confederate generals, the early Confederate leaders, um, those people during that time frame were saying, they did not mince words on what the heritage, on what the way of life was that they wanted to preserve. And what that was, was slavery. The war absolutely was fought over slavery. When they talk about northern aggression, the aggression was saying that all people should be, you know, free people, and we were still a long way away from, from full freedom, and honestly, we still are. Um, but that was the aggression that the North, you know, was looking at freeing slaves, of saying that people of color are actually people, which was something that Southern slave owners fought very firmly against, because to them, people of color were not people. They were property. That's it. And that is what the heritage of that symbol is. When I first moved to Ohio, and I was working for a particular retailer who I will not mention, um, and this is not on that retailer either, but I remember going outside for a break, and there was a gentleman there, an older gentleman, born and raised in Ohio, who heard my southern accent and immediately assumed that that meant something about me. Because people hear this southern accent and a lot of people assume that means you are going to be in line with a certain version of their conservative ideology. They never consider that you can be a southern person with a noticeable southern accent and also happen to be a southern progressive and believe that all people should be treated as equals, that believe that black lives matter, that believes that LGBTQ rights are human rights, that believe that women should have equal pay for equal work and that we should have paid maternity leave and universal health care and and, you know, free and affordable education for all people in the country. They don't assume that that represents who you are. But this gentleman heard my accent and immediately went to a conversation about the, you know, Confederate rebel flag. And, um, you know, brought that up and it immediately went to race. 
in his mind and in the minds of people who fly this, the vast majority who actually know what it's about, it is connected to race. And in his case, it was about people of color and him saying, quote, they want to take over this country. Still remember those words. And, you know, I did push back on it. I did let him know that that didn't represent who I was. And that as far as, quote, taking over the country, if we're talking about people of color being elected to office, people of color being, you know, in leadership positions within our country, hell yes. Take over, in, if that's what you mean by take over. Because our Congress, our elected offices, should be representative of the American people. And this may shock some of you, but the American people are not all white cisgender men in their 70s. There are people of color in our country. There are women in our country. There are, you know, brown, black, you know, lots of different viewpoints and different people. And that's what our government should represent in that. When we hear this dog whistle about saving our heritage, make no doubt about what it's about. It is a dog whistle to the racist element within our own society. The white supremacists who are afraid that their time is ending. And make no doubt, their time is ending. There is a new generation that is going to come up that is not going to accept this anymore. What you see with the Trump administration, with the things that have been put out, yes, it is dangerous. But make no doubt, it's a death rattle. This is the last stitch effort of that racist generation, that racist ideology that is fighting tooth and nail because it knows it's backed into a corner and it's dying. And I say, let it die. This nation had its first black president. We still haven't had our first female president because of both conservatives and progressives who decided that for conservatives, they decided that first female presidential candidate was way too progressive, and progressives put a purity test on her and decided she wasn't progressive enough for them, so they decided to take their toys and go home. And you gave us Donald Trump because you did that. But that is what we're talking about when we're looking at the issues. That Confederate symbol represents everything that is wrong with this country. If you're flying it, and look and see what it flies with. Nine times out of ten, it's flying with one of those Donald Trump flags. Because they are tied. There may be white supremacists, or there may be Trump supporters who are not quote-unquote white supremacists. But make no doubt, white supremacists are Trump supporters. You know, in other words, not every single Trump supporter is a racist, but every single racist is a Trump supporter. And that is what we're looking at. That is why he is going to this. He doesn't care about any of these issues, but he knows it's the dog whistle to rile that community up. And I'm going to end it here on that note. Southern or not, happily Southern, not one bit ashamed of my accent and, and any of that type of thing. But make no doubt. Southern heritage, which I believe in remembering. I believe in teaching our history. But there is no pride in that Southern heritage in regards to the Civil War, in regards to the Civil Rights Movement and how our Southern states especially failed miserably. Part of your Southern heritage is admitting our failures. We have plenty. It's not to be ashamed of being Southern. It's to be proud enough to be able to say, we need to do better. And that means when people start, even up in the North, taking these symbols that come from Southern racism, Southern people need to speak out when these people want to say, it's about heritage. Well, that is, quote, my heritage. And let me tell you, it is a racist heritage that has no place in our country. I really appreciate you joining in for the video. I hope you enjoyed or learned something or saw a different perspective um, in this video. Before I close, quick mention, I'm reaching over. 
If you didn't know, I did write a book. It's called The Grove. It's available on Amazon.com. It features a transgender lead character. I hope you'll consider supporting me by making that purchase. I'll have a link in the description below. And I will end with my quote from Kesha. Don't let the bastards get you down. Hold your head up high. Be proud of who you are. And realize that this nation is going to have to change. And we're going to have to be the change. You're the change by going out in November. Be safe. Do what you need to do. But this is an election that can change a lot of things for our country. Do it. Go out. Yes, there is a particular candidate to vote for, because if you're voting third party, you're throwing it away. You're throwing the election right to Donald Trump. If you're going to write in somebody who did not win a primary, you're wasting your time. You may as well vote for Donald Trump. Be a positive change. The candidate in question may not necessarily get us where we want to go, but that candidate will sure as hell get us a whole lot closer than Donald Trump ever will. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon.